so far this morning, it's been very beneficial from our point of view, and I hope we can continue that in this session. Could I ask you to introduce yourselves, and if you'd like to make an opening statement, by all means, by all means do so. Sure. Um, my name is Paul Stump. Um, I represent Harlow North, so it's quite a long way away from the uh, A12. <coughs> uh, I'm not exactly the most uh, frequent user, um, but I have been on the County Council for a while, and I'm a spokesperson on this kind of issues for the Labour group. I'm Paul Kirkman, I'm a councillor from Basildon, so similarly, we, uh, the A12 doesn't directly impact on the community I represent. Um, however, it, it does have secondary impacts on it, and the relationship between the A12 and the A127 yeah. is, and the A13, and it, it, it can spiral on forever. Yeah. Um, it, it is, is an important one, and I think we need to make sure that whatever we decide for the A12 fits into a broader context, yep. rather than just narrowly dealing with the issues of the A12, because I think well, we might miss the point if we to just do that. Mm -hmm. And there is an issue about the terms of reference, uh, uh, and it's procedural really, but the A12 runs through Essex, of course it does, you can see that. It doesn't start and end in Essex, it actually starts in London and ends in Suffolk. And there's that regional perspective that I think we need to enlighten as well. Both Paul and myself have been uh, closely involved in the regional planning process with the East England Regional Assembly. <coughs> and I think it, it's how it fits into that pattern because that's the only way you can make sense of it. Because not everybody who uses that road is either an Essex resident or employed in Essex. They, they may just be passing through quite literally. No, I think we accept that. Um, <coughs> in defence of the terms of reference, uh, it, I think it would be presumptuous uh, either for the Kennedy Council or indeed for us in this um, inquiry to look beyond, um, in terms of the terms of reference, beyond the boundaries of Essex. Uh, in, but we have asked, uh, we'll be asking both Suffolk County Council and uh, Transport for London whether they would actually like to put in any written evidence and we will certainly be hearing from people in um, coming sessions whose interests go wider than Essex itself and we will be hearing from people whose interests in Essex are not tied precisely to the A12 but actually have a wider, wider remit as well. I suppose the only other thing to say just at the outset is I think we're also conscious that um, you can't simply look at the A12 in total isolation as if there was no other road uh, in Essex or, or elsewhere in the country. By the same token, at least the chairman of this inquiry doesn't want to do an inquiry into every road in Essex That's because problem, uh, it could take a Where while. Where do you start? Where do you finish? It's, 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 it's a chicken and egg argument. Really. But I hope but, that, ex that but, sort, um, sort of explains it, our position. Also, the, the, the county council's responsibility for the hire, of course, you know, we've got a general power of well-being for people in Essex, so you can do almost anything you like. Um, but um, this is a highways agency primarily responsibility for the maintenance of the A12. I mean, obviously, we have a, a, a element of responsibility within that. But it, yeah, it is <coughs> fundamentally a, 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 a national-funded issue. It's not going to come out of the Essex taxpayers' uh, council tax pocket to fund this road in the, in, in the way that I, and I should imagine most people would imagine it needs to be funded. So it's, it's, it, 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 if we're going to have terms of reference that pay strict, strict adherence to the Ministry of the Boundaries of Essex, then perhaps we need to look at the competence of Essex to actually decide on how much mm. is going to be spent on this road because the Department of Transport might have something to say about that. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting philosophical debate. I don't want to well, dwell on it forever. No, no, I, I think that's helpful. Um, perhaps I should just say, in a sense, speaking for the, <coughs> for the place I used to work in until not that long ago, um, uh, in terms of um, the annual maintenance of this road, that then that clearly falls, I think, into the sorts of pots of money that the highways agency has. In terms of any major improvement to the road, um, because it's now classed as a regional significance, the funding has to come out of the allocation, the regional funding allocation for the east of England. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty um, uh, which um, uh, Councillor Hume and Councillor Bass were explaining to us uh, earlier in the morning is that um, Major major developments on this road are, would be extremely expensive, uh, would completely eat up most of the East of England allocation, um, and uh, it's, the road finds itself in a position where, although it's owned and managed by the highways agency, 
effectively decisions in terms of its priority for major further development rest with the East of England Regional Assembly and its constituent elements, drawing on a pot of money that would not be big enough to pay for any major developments on the A12. And that's, and that's not trying to jump to any answers, that's just recognising there's a certain uh, tension in the present arrangements which uh, I think we will need to look at. Um, but is there anything you want to add by way of preliminary observations? It, just that a, a lot of what the Regional Assembly does, I'm yeah. quite aware of it, it, it's, its lack of powers, I would say powers, but the absence of powers is probably a better description. A lot of what we do is advise ministers mm. and, and the government, my government, um, has has a primary responsibility for the investment in this, and all Essex County Council can really do is provide some additional information and uh, perhaps an appeal for more resources. It can't actually determine what happens as an authority itself. It will do it with other people, whether it's the regional assembly, which is soon to be abolished, which I'm very sad about, um, or, or um, you know, directly to ministers. It's, it's still a you know, Essex's role in that is somewhat limited, so we have to bear that in mind. We're looking at what answers we want, mm. we're asking other people. It's not that the county council can come up with a set of, of solutions to a set of problems and then say, right, well, what's our capital program like? Let's fix it. You can't. We've got to take those um, considerations to other people and get them to invest in it. So it's that process that uh, obviously I'd be looking for the inquiry to inform. And, and, and rather than you know having it done internally within the county council. And, and just to round off, um, before I ask my colleagues to join in, um, I think we see um, certainly one of the roles for this inquiry isn't isn't simply what needs to be done because there's quite a lot of people who already can tell you what needs to be done. There's a whole set of interesting questions as to why it needs to be done and why would it be the A12 that needs it done rather than some other road, whether in Essex or in some other English county. Mm. And while we will talk to people, um, for example, uh, who have interests in the major port developments in Felixstowe uh, and at Harwich and what it means for them in terms of um, the future of their businesses. But that, that, I think, is to come. Perhaps I could ask uh, David Cornby just to... To lead off then. <coughs> Thank you, yes. Um, <coughs> you're right to point out the formality of the position. What I think we're learning, I'm learning, uh, is that in the real real world the edges are fuzzier than that because there is room for influence, of course. there is room for challenge, there's room for advocacy, but in practical terms there's room for joint working of which there is quite a lot or already within the highways agency. Essex Police, County Council, etc., on a whole range of practical things to do with managing the congestion, managing incidents, etc. So uh, we're looking at the whole whole landscape, really, um, recognising that in a formal sense it's a highways agency road, but but the debate certainly doesn't stop stop there, and there's a great deal of room for both advocacy and collaboration and challenge and making the case and looking at alternatives, etc., and that's really what we're trying to, trying to do. Given what you both said at the beginning about the areas you represent and obviously involved in the regional assembly also, perhaps I could start by asking you to give your views on where you think the problems and challenges of the A12, forget it's a highways agency road for the moment, sit in relation to the county's road network as a whole, the other roads, the 414, the 120, the 127, etc., and maybe even within the region, because we are aware that uh, when the regional funding allocation was finally advised to government last year or year before, um, that there was little or nothing about the A12 in it. And question why. Where does it sit in the great scheme of things, the set of priorities for traffic and movement across the county and across the region? Well, I mean, yeah, sure. Um, just to go back to this regional allocation, I mean, one of the criteria was when it was deciding as to which schemes would be in, which schemes would be out, was that there would have to be deliverability by 2016. Mm. And, and so unless you had a scheme all up and running and designed,